We here. And if I can stop getting drunk with it, that'd be great. What's up, everybody? This is The Lifestyle, and I am Chanel Smith. So last week was July 4th, and also it was my birthday on July 6th. So I had to step away for just a little bit to celebrate my birthday and also um, our day of freedom here in America. So I am back this week. I'm trying to work on this whole consistency thing this time around. And as a disclaimer, there's a little rain, a little thunder in the background, so don't be alarmed. But I couldn't leave you for a whole nother week, right? So let's get into it. So between last week and this week, I had a lot of time to sit and think about what I wanted to say to you guys. And I remember telling you that I would be coming up with things as they pop up in my life or as I'm learning things in the season that I'm in that I wanted to share with you guys. And so one of those things that I'm learning right now that is really impressing upon my heart is just the whole fact of showing up and being present. I'm currently in a huge transition season. So between getting prepared for marriage, getting prepared to move in with my future husband, uh, finding a new job or whatever it may be, I'm learning that it is important to make sure that even though I have my own stuff going on, that I'm not only focusing on my stuff and I'm still making myself available to be there for other people as well. Because life doesn't stop just because you have things going on. So this made me think of two verses. The first verse being Genesis 2.18 when God talks about how it's not good for man to be alone. Now, obviously in that specific context, he was talking about, you know, bringing Eve to Adam, but also that statement runs true for just in general. Like it's not good for us as human beings to be alone. We need some type of community. We need some type of um, village to be around and to help us be sharpened and to help us um, be lifted and encouraged. And then the second one being Galatians 6 2, which talks about us carrying one another's burdens. It's so important for us to be there for one another. Okay, now you may be wondering in your head, okay, well, you know, I show up for this, I show up for that. You know, I'm a supportive friend, I'm a supportive colleague, I'm a supportive associate, whatever. But it's not just enough to just show up. Don't just show up for the celebration. Show up for the process, even when it looks like there's not even gonna be a celebration. I remember something that God spoke to me a while back and I wrote it down and it says, show up. Don't just show up when it benefits you. Show up when it's inconvenient for you. Show up when it costs you something. Show up when it really counts. Fake love is convenient. Real love is sacrificial. Don't just show up. Be present. Your presence speaks value. In a world where our generation is filled with so many distractions and like talk about our cell phones, we could be literally in a room full of people and every single person is minding their own business because they're so wrapped up in their cell phones. Nobody's talking to each other. Nobody's paying attention to what another is doing. Nobody knows what's going on because they're in their own world. But we have to be present. We have to show that we care. We have to be able to listen. We have to be able to empathize and show compassion. One thing that really, really caught my attention the other day, I was on Instagram and I saw this post and it said, check on your strong friend. Now that hit home for me. So if anybody knows me, they know more than likely in my circle, most of the time I'm that strong friend. And so a lot of people may come to me, um, for advice, I don't know why, because I don't feel like I really have much to give, but you know, whatever. But it really hit home for me because I can remember several times where I would be going through something and I literally would just sit and be like, I really wish that someone would think to reach out to me instead of me always reaching out to other people. And I always know that I'm the one that tries to figure it out on my own or deal with it with myself or, um, you know, just go through it by myself and that's not good either. But I remember feeling that way, like I wish that someone would be the way that I am to others towards me. So I really began to connect with that post. Check on your strong friend. Little do you know, your strong friend is not that strong aside from God. And more than likely, the enemy is working overtime during that moment to tear down their faith. 
Also, strong friend, recognize when you are weak and you need help. Don't be afraid or too prideful to ask for help. As I was thinking about this more, for some reason, the, uh, the moment in the Bible where Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane came to my mind and it hit me. I was like, yo, Jesus was the strong friend. Like in this whole scenario, Jesus was the strong friend. So if you look at Matthew 26, verse 36 to 46, I'm going to paraphrase and tell you what happened. Um, basically, Jesus was, they just left the Last Supper and Jesus and a few of his disciples went um, off and Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And his disciples were, you know, a little far out while he was praying. So Jesus was probably at one of his most weakest, most vulnerable moments um, that he's had. And so Jesus was like, yo, I'm about to go to this cross. I ain't really trying to do that. Yeah, so God, give me strength. Make a long story short, Jesus goes and back to his disciples and finds out that they're sleeping. He's like, yo, what's up? Like, y'all sleep though? Like, I need help right now. I'm weak. I need y'all to be up and praying. Why are y'all asleep? Like, what's going on? I need y'all help right now. So he's like, all right, I got to go back and pray. So he goes back to pray. And he's like, Lord, if this cup can pass me, please let it, you know? But if not, not my will, but your will be done. Like, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he goes back and he sees his disciples, his friends again. They're sleeping. And he's like, yo, y'all supposed to be watching and praying. Like, I need your help. They showed up, but they weren't present. They were asleep. They were physically there, but they were not alert. They were what they were not watchful and they were not in position to help Jesus in his weak moment. Even though he was the strong friend, even though he was God in the flesh, he still had a a weak moment. And so he needed them to be there in that moment, but they were asleep. Stay woke. And I'm gonna leave you with this. This is something else that I really felt God speaking to me. Um, and I wrote it down and it says, I need help. I can't do everything on my own. I need God, of course, but I also need God-given people. I need God-given community. I need help. It is not good for man to be alone. So I encourage you this week to remember this and to reach out to your strong friend and check up on them, make sure they're okay. And if you are that strong friend, to just reach out to your community around you when you're going through your weak moments. Now, if you will commit to not just showing up, but also being present, make sure you comment down below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications so you'll know when the next video is coming, and share, share, share this video. Don't forget, we're just like you. We just think this right. Keep it off the internet. Remember what I started just to tell you I ain't finished yet. You know I'm the one you've been waiting for. I'm the one the troubleshooters aiming for.